when I came to Heschel uh, 27 years ago as a young graduate, um, I was looking for um, a school that was interested in the art, teaching through multisensory learning, um, a school that was very committed to serious but creative, serious and creative Jewish learning. I was quite interested in the environment at that time. Um, and I was um, developing my interest in Abraham Joshua Heschel's work, along with many other Jewish scholars. And I saw this ad for this new school that was starting that somehow was combining all of these things. I was, is this actually true? Is there actually a school that wants to bring together hands-on, multi-sensory learning in a Jewish context, learning through the arts with a commitment to environmental stewardship? I could not believe my luck. I showed up, and lo and behold, it was true. Here was a school. It was one year old when I, when I came. Um, the previous year, they, I think, had had uh, 30 students or 40 students, um, but they were just sounded like the most incredible school, and it really, really is. Um, this is a place where um, high academic standards meet critical and creative thinking, meet Jewish soul. Um, and that combination, it's, it's really, really, really unique, I think, on the landscape. Um, there are people here who come kind of for one or the other or all three, but in the end, you get all three. Um, and it's just a really really wonderful integration. So um, core competencies. When people think about education, they think, what are my kids going to get? What are they going to be competent in? And we often think about literacy and numeracy, and those are obviously really, really important. But here at Heschel, for us, the core competencies go far beyond um, the academic realm. Yes, of course, high academic standards across the disciplines, and we are very, very committed to teaching our students how to think like mathematicians, think like scientists, think like writers, that absolutely critical. But beyond that, we think going into the world that we're entering into, you need far more basic competencies than that. You need to be a critical thinker. You need to be a creative thinker. You need to have a sense of awe and wonder at the world. It is so easy in the current world that we're in to be a little bit cynical, to be a little bit down, to be a little bit, ah, it doesn't matter. The sense of awe and wonder, it's not an extra added. It's the basis of education. When Rabbi Heschel said that wonder is the root of all knowledge, he meant that. He meant that the sense of, whoa, this is an amazing world that we're in, is the beginning. Because if you don't have that, why bother learning anything? And so for us, we want our students to graduate with that sense of awe and wonder. Strong Jewish identity rooted in Jewish literacy and knowledge and connection. For us, it's not enough that our students graduate with some vague sense of having what we might call good Jewish values. Because good Jewish values are great, but lots of people have good values. You don't have to be Jewish to have good values. You know, God willing, many people in this world have good values. Maybe not everyone, but many, right? To be Jewishly connected means you have to have a deep sense of the Jewish narratives and the Jewish language. Um, there are ways of thinking. Rabbi Heschel said, Judaism is a way of thinking, not just a way of living. And we want our students to have those ways of thinking. Um, I believe it was Maury Allen who mentioned that our school has a, a renowned Ivrit Beivrit language program. And that's not just because we want our kids to be able to go to Tel Aviv and order a pizza, because you don't need to know Hebrew to go to Tel Aviv and order a pizza. It's because Judaism is rooted in a language, and it's rooted in texts, and it's rooted in narratives and stories. And we want our students to have access to that rich, rich, rich heritage. Um, leadership and citizenship skills. Cannot think of more important competency these days than being a citizen. What does it mean to be an active, participatory citizen in this world and a leader? And of course, social emotional intelligence. We all know these days, um, you know, many people have technical competencies, but what really makes the difference in many, many work environments and frankly just in life is how well you can interact with other human beings, how well you know yourself and, and how well you know others. So for us, <clears throat> these are the core competencies that include but go far beyond um, simply numeracy and literacy um, and thinking like a scientist, which are, of course, also really important. So you might ask, okay, that all sounds great, but what about math? What about spelling? What about science? What about Hebrew? Don't we send our kids to school to learn stuff? Like, what's this all leadership and social-emotional learning and creativity? That's wonderful, but at the end of the day, will they know how to read? Will they know how to write? Will they know how to do math? You know, that's important, right? So for us, what the main difference is not that we don't teach those things. If you were to go into a class, you're going to see math happening, literacy happening, science happening, um, Hebrew happening. It's not the what we teach that makes special difference. It's the why we're teaching it and therefore the way 
that we teach it. Because our goal isn't just to teach those subjects, it's to use those subjects to achieve those other major and important core competencies um, that we think are so essential. And to sort of understand where the school's coming from in terms of its why, its purpose, its kavanah, as we would say in Hebrew, um, it's important to think back to our founders. There were five incredible visionaries who founded the school, um, starting on the uh, far, I don't know, I guess it's your left, um, Gail Baker, was had a deep interest in um, teaching for understanding, which was a method that came out of Harvard University. It's still around today. They still teach it, which is how do you learn everything you're learning for deep understanding and not just for superficial competency. Um, Baruch Rand, Zichrono um, Livracha, was our first head of school. He was a Heschel scholar, um, ra rabbi, she called herself now rabbi or I keep going. Rabbi, Rabbi, Dr. Rachel Turkinich. Um, was very, very interested in Jewish pluralism and how we bring together Jews from different communities, different ways of practicing Judaism, um, to be together in a space where we can learn from each other and be with each other. Um, Judith Leitner was our integrated arts educator and is still uh, very involved with the school at a board level. Um, and Ellen Kessler, um, environmental stewardship. So each of these people came together to build this incredible school with these different orientations. But if I think about one thing that all of them had in common, what was the common denominator? It's this word tikkun olam. And the word tikkun olam is, um, I think, often misunderstood. A lot of people think tikkun olam has to do with environmentalism or you know, just sort of being nice to people. Um, but tikkun olam is a very, very profound Jewish concept. It drove Rabbi Heschel um, in his work during the civil rights movement. It really is the idea that we can make this world a better place in many, many ways. So it's not just about fixing the world um, from an environmental perspective, although of course that is part of it. Um, but tikkun olam really speaks to this idea, which is that God created this world incomplete, on purpose, on purpose so that we could have a role in continuing the work of creation um, and enhancing the world. And by enhancing the world, we mean the world of ourselves. What does it mean to do tikkun olam at the personal level, at the self level, which is an intellectual activity and an emotional activity and a spiritual activity? How do we help our students develop physically, intellectually, emotionally, and socially? How do we help them become better human beings in all of these ways? How do we help in the realm of interpersonal relationships, because that's challenging. You know, We aren't born knowing how to relate to one another. That's something we need to learn. And especially these days, social media, which is a real challenge for interpersonal relationships, we realize more and more and more we have to engage our students working with each other. One thing you will notice is that our students never sit in rows at Heschel, because who wants to spend the day staring at the back of somebody else's head, right? We try to engage our students always in working with each other, working in small groups, working in chavruta. There's this idea of small group learning. Some of you may have heard about it. It came up uh, in the 60s. Oh, wait a minute. Chavruta. Jews have been doing that for 2,000 years. This is not a new methodology. We know that human beings learn best when they're in conversation with each other. And then, of course, tikkun of the world, the physical world, society writ large. We want to prepare our students to be able to do that um, when they're older. But really, it starts with them as human beings, individuals, and in their um, interpersonal relationships. So again, you might ask, wait a minute, how do you do that while also teaching math, science, language arts, chumash, Hebrew, all of these things? Well, for us, the subjects, the old traditional subjects of school, are the almost like the clay, the chomer that we use in order to teach um, these more important competencies and tikkun olam. Um, and you might ask, how exactly is it that we do that? So one of the ways is by adopting a vision of education called transformative education. There are really you know, many, many theories of education out in this world, but you can kind of group them in two large categories. One of them um, is transmission education. It's what many of us experienced when we were in school. Um, it's a little bit kind of like what I'm doing right now, I hate to tell you, um, but not what we do a lot with our students, which is somebody stands at the front and kind of gives you information, and you're supposed to like absorb that information and maybe write it down on a test and regurgitate it back, that sort of thing. And the idea really is that education is there's a set of knowledge, somebody has it, the teacher, they know what you're supposed to learn as a kid because you know the future is going to be pretty much the same as the past. I'm going to give you that information. You're going to know what to do. All is good. If you just you know, sit and be quiet for eight hours a day, um, you will learn and go out into the world and, and be a productive human being. Right? You know, there's probably a little bit more to it than that. 
but it is really based on the idea that whatever worked in the past will work again in the future, and the job of the teacher is really just to train students in the past for the future. Transformative education is really quite different. The job of the teacher is actually not to stand in front of the room. The job of the teacher is to facilitate learning environments in which students make their own connections and learn how to think critically and creatively because at the end of the day, we don't really know what information will be relevant for students in the future. We don't know. And especially now because the future really is a you know, perpetually moving horizon. Right? We want to make sure our students know how to learn. We want to make sure our students know how to evaluate problems critically and thoughtfully. And we want to know that they have the confidence to go out in the world and say, yeah, I've got this. I know how to solve this problem. I've thought about things kind of like this before. Maybe it's different. That's transformative education. And by its definition, transforms. The job of education is to transform the student so that after the class that I just had in my Kumash class, I'm actually a little bit of a different person than I was when I walked in. Something shifted, something changed. I've, you know, there's something new that's happened. I'm not the same person. And that's what we strive for here at Heschel. Um, and this method of education is not only shown to be better in terms of research, kids learn better this way because you learn better when your classes are engaging and when you're working with your peers and when you're learning through the arts and when you're learning through hands-on activities, it's just you learn better, you know, whatever the subject happens to be. But it also helps you become better as a person, better in your relationships with others, and more capable of actually being a positive contributor in the world. But again, and I'm going to keep coming back to it, what does that mean for math, science, spelling, Hebrew, etc.? Well, you can teach those subjects both ways. You can teach math as a transmission activity. You can teach kids facts and figures. You can have them memorize their multiplication tables. Um, you can do transmission education. They'll learn the math. It works right, in terms of teaching math. But what it doesn't do is it doesn't teach you to think creatively, and it doesn't teach you to think critically, and it doesn't give you confidence in your abilities as a mathematician. We teach in a way that engages students in real understanding about what they're learning. My favorite example, it comes from grade one. Um, how do you add the numbers one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus seven plus eight plus nine? How do you do that? So most people be like, well, one plus two is three, and three plus four is seven. We teach our students to think critically about that problem. You know, you could just match one and nine and two and eight and three and seven and four and six, and that'll get you to 40 really quickly, and then five is 45. So we want our students to look at problems critically, thoughtfully. There are lots of different ways to solve math problems. Some ways are really smart and elegant. <clears throat> Some ways are not very smart and elegant. We want our students to think in the smart and elegant way. As you can see from that image, and we do it a lot, learning through games, learning through work with partners, and also, um, what you can't see because it's not that clear, but real understanding when I'm adding, I'm adding stuff, I'm adding things. It's a reality, it's a story, it's not just numbers. Or as one of my favorite mathematicians um, says, uh, numbers are the least important part of math, right? Um, same thing with learning Judaic studies. So you can learn Judaic studies through transmission education. I could tell you a nice story about Avraham, Sarah, Yitzchak, or Yaakov. We could, I could tell you all those narratives. And at the end, you'll have the stories, and that's nice, right? What we do, we teach Jewishly. So we put our students into Chavruta. Amazing thing, you can walk into a class here at Heschel and you can see two students sitting at their desk reading a traditional Jewish text, you know, not with pictures, like just the words, those black and white, beautiful, beautiful black and white letters, speaking to each other in Hebrew, in Hebrew, about what's going on in that text. And for us, there's so much more to that than just learning the story. They're doing real, rigorous, thoughtful Jewish learning that allows them to own that text. So they're not getting the message of the text from me, the teacher. They're getting the message of that text from the text in their own minds. And for us, that's what Jewish education is. That's what Jewish learning is. When our students are learning Rashi, what are they learning? They're learning footnotes and referencing, right? They're learning about, if I don't understand something, where do I go to find the information? Right? This is Jewish learning as a, as a kind of intellectual activity, as well as a moral and uh, social activity. Um, so when we teach what we call through the disciplines, um, rather than just teaching the disciplines, i.e. the subjects, we develop core competencies. When we teach Hebrew through our immersive approach, which we do here 
It's Ivrit be Ivrit. That means teachers speak to kids in Hebrew. Kids speak to teachers in Hebrew. Kids speak to each other in Hebrew. The other day, I had to come out of my office because I heard a little conversation going on in the hallway. Grade one students. I walk outside. I see these three grade one students, and little grade one students practicing a little Hebrew play in Hebrew. One of them didn't know what to do, and he said, Ma, ma ni agid. What am I supposed to say? I couldn't believe it. I was like, this is unbelievable. This is not a Hebrew speaker. Said to one of the others, I don't know what I'm supposed to say now in Hebrew. Right? This develops a deep sense of Jewish identity, a sense that I own this tradition. This is part of me and my embodied sense of what it means to be a Jew. Um, pluralism, right? Nothing, in a way, I think is more important these days for pluralism than the Hebrew language. Who speaks Hebrew? Orthodox Jews, secular Jews, cultural Jews, Reform Jews. Hebrew is, I think, going to be the thing that binds us together and also allows us to explore our culture in many, 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 many different ways. Because you can read Tanakh in Hebrew, you can read um, modern Jewish poetry in Hebrew, you can listen to Israeli music in Hebrew. It's, I think, going to become the thread that binds us together while allowing us to be diverse and creative. When we learn language arts, as we do here through, at Heschel, through poetry and speech writing, a lot of theater, a lot of drama here, right? That allows our students to cultivate a sense of self-awareness, of creativity, um, capacity to communicate, and self-confidence. So it's not just about answering comprehension questions. There's nothing worse than asking kids to spend eight years answering comprehension questions about a book, right? Okay, don't tell me about, you know, just the facts and figures of that book. Tell me how it spoke to you. Tell me what it meant to you. Right? Tell me how you would respond to it creatively. Write me a poem based on that chapter. Don't just tell me what the main character said on page 34. Right? Um, Tornu, civics, student council, being leaders during tefillah. What's the point of that? Build leadership, build citizenship. Help our students understand that their job is not just to be passive recipients, but to be active participants. Um, we love to move here at Heschel, as I said before, and I no noticed nobody took me up on it. I was actually actually going to lead you guys in some kind of kinesthetic activity, but usually when I do that, people are like, eh, okay, wait a minute. Um, but again, feel free. Um, dance. We have a dance program starting here in grade five, uh, grade five, grade six, grade seven, grade eight. It is unbelievable to see what our students do, taking Jewish texts, poetry, Torah stories, and turning them into dances. Girls, boys, all of them on stage doing it. It's amazing. We have an incredible physical education program. Uh, Mary Ellen didn't spend a lot of time on it, but uh, we have a, a really good sports program here at the school. Um, because the school is uh, relatively small compared to some other schools, all the kids get to participate in a lot of stuff. So at another school, your kid might not get to be on the basketball team. Here, they get to be on the basketball team. Um, and not only that, but our girls team made it to the finals, I believe, this year. And it looks like our boys team are going to you know, make it to maybe even, we got high hopes for them. They're really, really excellent this year. Um, when we teach science um, through the scientific method or math for critical thinking, rather than just facts and figures, what we're teaching our students to do is think. Think like a scientist. Think like a mathematician. Don't just tell me math, math stuff or science stuff. Right? Science should not be reading comprehension. Science is science. Right? So our students build. You might notice over there some projects that our students have done. That's part of our grade 7 energy program, uh, building windmills, building a solar heater, um, learning how to think scientifically. So we do this in many, many different ways. Our methodologies are diverse. But the key ones really are integrated learning. So students will learn um, about a general topic through math, through science, through language arts, through Hebrew, through Tanakh, all kind of integrated um, around a big idea, and also multisensory learning. Because we know that our brains like to receive, process, and express information in many, many different ways, right? Through music, through dance, through language, through logical reasoning. And it's not that like some kids only get to do it one way or some kids are best at doing it that way. I mean, that is true. People are, have different abilities, but we embrace all of our students in learning through all of the methodologies. So the other great thing about that is people get to shine in different ways. You know, math might be my strength and I do really well in that area. Drama, I'm a little bit shy, but I'm still gonna do it. I'm still gonna get up there. Likewise, the person who's really great at drama gets their opportunity, and then they have to struggle a little bit through the math, and that's okay too, because we're all right with our students working hard. I mean, that's part of what it means to be a good student. Um, some of the other methodologies, 
hands-on experiential, you'll see a lot of hands-on doing, making, building. People often say to us, we don't see a lot of smart boards around in your school. And that's because we really privilege smart teachers over smart boards here at Heschel, right? There will be lots of time for kids to spend in front of screens. And they already spend too much time in front of screens, frankly. We think an elementary education um, should be about learning how to do stuff with your hands, physically, interactively with human beings. Yes, our junior high students have computers. Yes, they know how to use them. Yes, we teach them how to you know, share documents and use Excel and all that stuff, you know. Um, but we're not going to put our kids in front of screens for six hours, seven hours a day at the Toronto Heschel School. There'll be lots of time for that later, right? And as I, my understanding is the folks over at, at Google um, send their kids to schools where they don't use screens. So that must be telling us something um, that, uh, that's going on. Um, lots of learning through games, uh, mindfulness activities. We teach our students how to, um, to meditate, uh, how breathing activities, learning how to self-regulate, um, a lot of and collaboration, outdoor learning. I don't know if you've had a chance. Well, it's all covered right now, but normally this beautiful white space is a beautiful green space. We have a lot of it, so take a lot of opportunity to look. In fact, for no reason other than the amazing green space that this school has, it's a place to send your kids because at recess they just like run out into this enormous, beautiful green space and breathe lots of air. Um, as we mentioned before, Hebrew immersion, um, a really important part of what we do. So at the end of the day, I think the real differentiator on Heschel is not what we teach, because we teach the same things as the other schools. It's how we do it. It might seem like a small difference, but it makes all the difference, all the difference in terms of the core competencies that we want our students to come out with um, at the end of the day. So once again, high academic standards, critical thinking, creative thinking, awe and wonder at the world, strong Jewish identity rooted in knowledge and literacy and language, leadership, citizenship, social, emotional learning, and empathy for others. Um, and on that note, um, the empathy and social, emotional learning note, I want to hand this back to Maury Allen, who's going to talk a little bit more about how we explore some of those pieces at the school and, uh, and a few other things. So thank you all for your time. Um, if you need to take a stretch, a breather, you want to move a little bit, again, uh, be our guest. <laughs> thank you.